Hello and welcome to Kane and Company. I'm David Kane, and today I'm really excited to cover a new topic that we've never covered on the show, and that's how to work with challenge credit customers and what's the right setup to uh, put into your franchise dealership. So with me today is uh, Sean Foster, and Sean is the executive trainer for a company called Dealer Strong. And a lot of you are probably familiar with Greg Goebel in our industry, a real exceptional trainer. And so we've got the benefit of uh, Sean's expertise, and we'll just get right to it. So I'm really excited to have Sean Foster, the executive trainer with Dealer Strong, with me today. And I'd like to uh, really just play off of your experience, if I can, Sean, and, and try to give some advice to franchise dealers who are considering or who are trying to uh, improve their operation to help customers who have challenge credit. If you could uh, just kind of give us a brief introduction to what that environment is like and, and what dealers probably should consider when they embark on this. Absolutely. I, first off, let me say thanks for having me here today. I certainly appreciate your time. And I work with franchise dealers and independents around the country on a regular basis doing just that, trying to either install a subprime operation or improve a current one, whatever it might be. And at Dealer Strong, we really focus on three things when it comes to building a foundation for special finance. It, it evolves around sales process, data management, and inventory control. And those are really the three things that are the biggest focus that dealers need to pay attention to when it comes to embarking on this scenario. If you were to ask me, what's the one thing that dealers fail at more often than not? It always goes back to the sales process. Yes. You know, we've been taught to sell cars the same way for the last 30 years, which is my time in the car business. And if you're still selling cars that way, chances are you're gonna be mediocre at best or most likely struggle in special finance because you've got to change the sales process. Well, so that's interesting that you bring that up because obviously that's the world I live in and uh, whether it's internet leads or inbound phone calls, it just seems as though that that's pretty much the nature of it. Speaking of subprime and, and particularly when it comes to inventory, um, we see a lot of dealers who, who are mega wholesalers and they, they get rid of a lot of perhaps opportunity inventory. Could you share a little bit of advice uh, on what they might want to do, particularly if they're in an as-is uh, state that allows them to sell vehicles as-is? Absolutely. Uh, ironically, there's an app for that. Uh, <laughs> I am the inventor. It's called Bidspin. But dealers around the country a lot of times uh, are wholesaling cars out the back door that their competitors are buying and selling right next door. Uh, so whenever you have a used car manager or somebody who's in charge of inventory liquidation, the breakdown is in the communication, David, between the special finance guy and the person who's handling inventory, because inevitably those are two different people. And because of that, a lot of times those prime subprime cars, as I call them, the real sweet spots are going out the back door before anybody finds out and giving the special finance guy the opportunity to actually make a deal on that particular vehicle. So if you're wholesaling vehicles, as I tell all my clients, if you've got a wholesaler buying cars at your store, you're probably selling him cars that your competitors are selling against you. That makes total sense. So interesting enough, a lot of dealers are, are just maybe living off of uh, old thought processes that you have to go have a tow truck and you have to be a repo person. Could you give us a modern view of what the subprime market is like? Yeah, that's a, that's a huge myth. You know what? When I was a dealer for many years, the special finance car and the special finance customer, everybody thought was a four to six thousand dollar ACV. And the truth of the matter is, we track we track thousands of deals, specifically at Dealer Strong, and the average amount financed for the lowest tier, as we call tier four, is over sixteen thousand dollars amount financed. That's an ACV that's somewhere between eight and twelve thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, that's considerably different than what most people would consider. Is there a, um, a sweet spot from a credit standpoint where if dealers are, are considering this and, and they're starting to see different scores come in that they maybe would say, hey, it's really time that I reach out to Sean and say, we need to get this going. What, what, should, what should be the indicators, the market indicators for them? That's a great question. One of the first things I do for dealers 
is I go into dealer track or route one if they're using those tools and I pull a credit, what we call a credit bureau analysis. And I like to look at all the credit pulls in the last 30 days and then I match those up to the actual deliveries in the last 30 days. And inevitably what you'll find is dealers are struggling in that sub 600 score. Yes. Many times a dealer will tell me we don't really get any special finance business here. And when they pull that CBA or credit bureau analysis, it's a real eye opener. They find out that there's a significant number of people walking in the store that they're pulling bureaus on and never even working those deals because of the attitudes from the top down of yeah. that's not really our business. When in yeah. fact it could be if they just put an effort into it. So it's interesting you bring that up. So from a staffing standpoint, I know that um, in, our in, or in our environment, we uh, see all kinds of different structures. So is there a recommended, particularly uh, thinking from a franchise dealer standpoint, is this someone who is uh, in addition to their finance person? Is this uh, oftentimes run through their business development center? How, how would you recommend someone consider structuring this? Based on the size of the store and based on the volume, obviously we like to see blended sales floors. You know, the old days, you probably remember, you and I have been in the business a long time, <laughs> the special finance guy worked out of a trailer out back on the back lot. Yes. And in today's world, the truth of the matter is, credit has something that bad things happen to good people in the last 10 years. In 2008, 2009, when the world changed, yeah. you can no longer identify special finance customers by the way they look. And because of that, we like to see blended sales floors. There may be a specified subprime manager in a particular department inside the store, but the best performing dealers in the country that are in subprime, their salespeople handle all customers and they're trained to identify a subprime customer early on in the process, which is really what we teach. Obviously, Greg Goble wrote the book Balloons, uh, Red and Green Balloons, and that's what that's all about. It's, un it's understanding who is the customer prior to vehicle selection. And if you can get that done, you can do that with your current sales staff and either the same or an additional manager based on your volume. Wow, that's excellent. Well, you have uh, excellent credentials, obviously, you know, long-term general manager of one of the largest Chevrolet stores in the country, record uh, month, 1,100 units in one month. So you've got, you've got a lot of experience and became an independent dealer on your own and, and now we all have the good fortune of being able to be trained by you should we so choose. So Sean, I want to thank you very much for your candid guidance and uh, very, very uh, informational. What I'd like to do is encourage the uh, viewers, if they've got any questions for you, to send them to me at David at Kane Automotive. I'll forward them and uh, in future shows we'll be able to cover that and uh, provide your guidance. Thank you so much for being with me today and by the way, happy birthday. Hey, thanks for having me, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much, Sean. Wow, I don't know about you all, but I sure learned a lot during that interview. I had so many misperceptions and misconceptions of what uh, subprime would be like in a dealership and, and from a structural standpoint, what to do with the inventory. And I think Sean really gave some valid points about how easy it really is to keep the inventory and to stop selling it to our competitors and then have them show up in our market with our, with our customers that we could be selling the cars to ourselves. So give it a try. And if you have any questions, feel free to send them my way and we'll be glad to get them answered for you. I'm David Kane. Thanks a lot for joining me and I'll see you next time here on Kane & Company.